Hey, hey, this is Julian and you're on Eat The Blocks. And in this video, I'm going to tell you which Ethereum testnet you should pick for your smart contract. So let's say that you have developed your smart contract and you tested it against a local development blockchain. So most likely a Ganache and everything works fine. So can you just deploy to mainnet the real Ethereum network? No, because the problem is your local development blockchain is not close enough to the real Ethereum network to mainnet. So maybe that the test work on your computer, but when you're going to deploy your smart contract, maybe that you're going to find there still are some bugs. So if you really, really want to be sure that everything works fine, you need to test your smart contract on a public test net. So a public test net is an alternative Ethereum network that is as close as possible to mainnet, the real network, but everything you do on it doesn't matter. The, the ether you manipulate on it is a fake ether. It's not real ether. So if you do any mistake, it doesn't have any real life consequences. It's, it's totally independent from the real Ethereum network. Um, so on a public testnet, contrary to your local development blockchain, you have different nodes. So that's exactly like in the, the real mainnet. So uh, you have a mining process. So when a transaction is sent to this network, it's not added automatically to the blockchain like it's the case on Ganache, but instead it takes time to mine it. And also generally speaking, you are not in full control of this test net. You can not just start it and, uh, and stop it like you would do with Ganache, but it's just running independently of you. So there are three test nets that are really, really important. One is called Robston, then you have Kovan, then you have Rinkeby. So you still have many other ones, but these three ones are really the, the main one. So let's compare them and so we can know which one is the best to test your smart contract. So first let's compare the block time. So the block time is how long it takes to mine a block. So like for everything we're going to compare, we want each of these parameters to be as close as possible to mainnet. So on Robston, the block time is 30 seconds, but on mainnet is 15 seconds. So it's a, it's a bit slow. Uh, on Kovan, it's four seconds. Uh, so that's convenient because this is fast, but uh, this is also very different from 15 seconds. And on Rinkeby, it's 15 seconds. So Rinkeby win for that one. Um, then we have a parameter called the block gas limit. So that one is a bit tricky because this is different from the gas limit of your transaction. So the gas limit of your transaction is a parameter that you set when you set a transaction. And this means I don't want to spend more gas than this value. But the block gas, the block gas limit is different. The block gas limit in a, in a block, it defines the maximum of gas spent for all the transactions. So you're going to sum the gas spent of transaction one, two, three, four, five, etc., until you have all the transactions of the block. And this should not exceed a certain value. So on mainnet, the block gas limit is 10 million, but actually for most of the testnet is less than that. It's 8 million on a uh, Robstan, 8 million on Kovan, and uh, 7 million on, uh, on Rinkeby. Um, so this can be the source of, uh, of bug. Uh, that'd be nice if this testnet could catch up with, uh, with mainnet. Then you have the chain data size. So how big is the data of this blockchain? So for Robstan is 15 gigs, Kovan 13, Rinkeby 6 gigs. Um, so if you wanted to run uh, the, the, an Ethereum node for this testnet on your computer with that kind of, uh, of data size, then you could absolutely do it. But this is not very important because actually most developers, they don't run themselves an Ethereum node for, for public testnet, but they will use an API service like Infra that run these nodes for them. So you can pretty much ignore this parameter. Then you have the algorithm, so how the consensus is established. So for mainnet, we use proof of work. So ideally we want the same thing for, for, for the public testnet. So for Robston, we use proof of work like for mainnet, so that's good. For Kovan and, uh, and Rinkeby is proof of authority. So proof of authority means that there are certain person in a network 
uh, that are deemed uh, worthy of, uh, of, uh, of, of our trust. And so they have the right to, uh, to add any, uh, any transaction. So this is good for security because that means that it's not possible for a hacker to, uh, to hack a, a testnet, um, which is, by the way, a hacker that hack a testnet uh, it's not, it's not, uh, it doesn't have any real life consequences, but uh, for developer, it can be annoying because uh, sometimes they can't use the, the testnet because of that. But, but the downside of proof of authority is that it's not uh, the same thing as for, for mainnet. So, so that's a bit of a problem. Then we have a, which Ethereum client each testnet support. So Robsten support the two major clients, which are Geth and Parity. So that's good. But the other one, Kovan and Rinkeby, so Kovan only support parity and Rinkeby support only geth. So that's not ideal for, for testing because in the real network, both parity and geth will run uh, on a mainnet. So not super good. And finally, we need to make sure that this testnet have a, a good um, infrastructure. So I'm talking of blockchain explorer. And, uh, and faucet. So blockchain explorer will allow you to analyze any transaction. Um, so we absolutely need this. So for Robsten, Kovan and Rinkeby, we can use Etherscan and they have some subdomain for each of, uh, of these testnet. So that's, that's very convenient. And also another thing to consider is the faucet. So the faucet is a mechanism that you're gonna use to get for free some fake ether for this testnet. You do need to have some of this fake ether, otherwise you won't be able to deploy your, your smart contract and, and run your test. So both of these, uh, these three network uh, all have a good faucet, um, but sometimes some of the faucet uh, don't work. So it's better if you pick a network that has some uh, extra faucet. So my personal experience working with these three network. So, so the one you will need to test for sure it's Robston because that's the only one that supports both parity and gas. So that's the closest to uh, to mainnet. So you have to test on this one. But the problem is that it's so slow on Robston. So they say that the block time is thirty seconds, but many times I, I wait much longer than this. And even, even sometimes it's so long that my transaction is actually dropped. And I, <laughs> I mean, I have to, uh, to wait forever. And this is like super annoying. It really slowed me down. Um, so that's super, super annoying. Um, Kovan and Rinkeby, uh, they, are, they are very fast. They are also uh, more reliable than, uh, than Robsten. Sometimes Robsten is hacked or is uh, unstable. This really rarely happened on uh, Kovan and, and Rinkeby. So here is what I recommend you. So let's say you're developing your smart contract, you run your test locally, it's fine. Maybe once a day, you can uh, try to run your test against either Kovan or, or Rinkeby. And at the end of each week, you run your test against Robston. So you just do it once a week so that you're not too affected by the potential problem uh, you'll have on it. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention one important thing. So sometime in your smart contract, you want to use some other smart contract that are already deployed in public test net. So for example, if you want to integrate some uh, DeFi project like Uniswap of, or, or DAI, then this project, they maintain deployment of their own infrastructure on the different test net. So that can be quite uh, useful to, uh, to connect to, to this deployment uh, directly. The problem is that this project, they, they can deploy, they maintain deployment in different test nets. So you have some project that deploy to, to Kovan, some other to, uh, to Rinkeby. So if you need to integrate between different projects, then sometimes it's impossible and you have to, to deploy your own version of, uh, of their smart contract. But this is like an advanced uh, problematic. So I'm kind of curious, uh, what's your experience with testnet? Which one you use the most often and what kind of problem you encounter? Please let me know in the comments down below. That's pretty much it on this video on which uh, Ethereum testnet you should pick for your smart contract. Thanks for watching. See you for another video. Bye-bye.